Excellent. Is 81 really that bad? I don't, I don't think 81's that bad. I mean, look, I'm even gonna turn it off right now, just so I can talk to you guys and the sound will be a little bit better. The trick is you gotta get a fan. You gotta have a fan blowing, and then you gotta have like sandals. You gotta wear sandals, and it helps to just like lounge around on the on the couch all the time too. Right here. This tail's wagging. Oh, see, I turned off the AC and now there's a train rolling by. But, uh, hey guys, and welcome to Paul's Hardware. This is my video for a hot summer weekend uh, because I am spending the entire weekend benchmarking. And it's hot. That's why I'm in the dining room yet again. Uh, and I've promised my wife that once Threadripper benchmarking is all done with, I will be relinquishing the dining room table back to her so we can use it for normal stuff again. Like making homemade dog booties. Threadripper benchmarking is ongoing though, and that's pretty much all I can tell you. That's my system right there. Monitor's off because I can't share any benchmarks quite yet. Uh, but to go along with the benchmarking Threadripper, I thought, hey, I should probably compare it, and I think I should compare it against the 7900X. So this is going to be project one of two, hopefully, for this video, is uh, setting up the second test bed to compare against Threadripper. And then also, I'm hopefully going to be installing, if my wife comes home with them, some sit-stand desks in our main computer room. This system, by the way, is a system that I built in my accidental computer build, and I've been using this as my main editing system in the computer room. So all of my Pulse Hardware videos that you guys have been watching over the past few weeks are all rendered on this system. And I built it because I wanted to use that 7900X, and I wanted to, because I just wanted to use it. Like, I hate when I get things in and, and, and I don't use them. So it's been being used, it's doing a good job. 7900X, it's a $1,000 processor, uh, it's 10 cores and 20 threads, and I just have it running at stock, but it's been staying cool enough with my Master Air Maker 4 right here. Uh, it's only been hitting maybe the mid to low 80s when I'm rendering, uh, so, so not too bad, although, again, haven't really done any overclocking with it, so uh, we'll see what happens once I move on to that. But I need to get that 7900X out of here because I can't really use this system. I, this system has too much stuff going on with it to test against uh, Threadripper. I need a more clean system, and for that I will be using this system right here. This system has the MSI X299 Gaming M7 ACK. It has a very clean Windows installation on it, and it has the exact same memory kit that I have on the Threadripper system over there. Uh, G-Skill 4x8 uh, gig kit. It's a DDR4-3200 CAS latency 14. So mission one is pretty straightforward here. Uh, I'm just going to get on with it and swap out these CPUs. like nothing ever happened. So we're going to postpone the computer room upgrade project, the sit-stand desks. Uh, we'll get back to that at a later date. Today we're going to go and get some wood, because if you guys recall, my HTPC project is still sort of in the works. It is functional, but it's still just sitting kind of on top of uh, 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 the, the subwoofer in the... Pardon me, sir. If you guys recall the HTPC though, it's still just kind of sitting on top of the subwoofer in the uh, living room. So uh, I want to wall mount that and I have an idea of how to do that. So we're going to a place called Tool Peak Lumber. Or it might be Tooley Peak. Uh, we'll figure it out how, how to pronounce it when we get there. And uh, we're, we're going to see what kind of live edge wood slabs they have. And then uh, we also brought the dogs because we didn't want to just leave them at home. And, and my wife's here too. And, and she's awesome. what I've ever seen, I think, anyway. It's weird, too, because we're, like, out in the kind of desert in California, so, like, there's not a lot of actual trees around here. I'm gonna 
ask you to pick this up. Don't let it slip. It's, it's on the heavy side. Okay. <laughs> it's, <laughs> this is an engineered cookie. This is, is an it, engineered is it, cookie. Is it empty inside? Nope. It's, wow. Built like an airplane wing. And these are the vine trimmings from a vineyard. Oh, this is okay. what they would normally throw away, and we reproduce it as a serving tray. That's pick, really cool. Pick it up, it weighs a pound. Wow. So serve drinks on this. Yep, it's one of a kind. People think you're really buff, you're carrying the drinks and this big old slab of wood. Yep. All right, it's rolling. <laughs> it's Thule, Thule Valley lumber, right? Timber, timber bear. Tim timber? Like, Timber wolf. Timber. So Thule Peak Timber was an absolutely fascinating place. At first we were driving there and it was like, where are they gonna get wood from? We're kind of driving through the California desert. But uh, when we got there, we met Rob, who's the owner operator, as well as his awesome boxer dog, uh, whose name was Lily. And he showed us around the place. Basically they get reclaimed wood from all over California. Um, all over the place, he said, anytime that they're digging up trees or anything like that, he will reach out and try to get a hold of whatever it is that they're pulling out of the ground, have it transported to him, and then he has a bunch of specialized machinery set up. He showed us, for instance, a computer-controlled uh, contraption for basically milling wood. Uh, I don't know, I, I'm sure I'm missing a lot of the details here, but a really fascinating operation that they had up there, as well as a really wide range of live edge slabs, which is what I was kind of looking for when we went there. Um, so he showed us a bunch of those. He advised that we get uh, kiln dried ones to make sure that any uh, bugs or critters that might be inside them are dead. Uh, so we did find a piece of wood. So mission was successful overall. We found a piece of wood, and it was a really cool uh, thing actually to go and see. So I don't know, if you happen to be in the Temecula area, it's only about 20 to 30 minute drive out of, outside of Temecula. And uh, it's, it's cool to just go up and check out. You do need to get in touch with them first and make an appointment, but I will put a link in the description to their website if you guys are at all interested. Um, but after that, we came here to where I am right now, which is the Bailey Vineyard uh, here in Temecula. And we've been enjoying a lovely lunch. Um, here, actually, they, it's dog friendly, so we're able to bring the dogs along, and they came out with us. In fact, we even got them burger. The Bow Wow Burger. We got the Bow Wow Burger for the dogs, because uh, they have a pet menu, and they devoured it. Here it does have the size advantage on Nori, though, so um, I guess I guess he's just, you know, throwing his weight around a little bit. But uh, we had a lovely meal here for lunch, and what are, what are we doing now? Are we going home? Are we we are going, wine tasting. We're going to do some wine tasting next, so um, let's go taste some wine. I wasn't, I wasn't ready to film. It's okay though. We're at um, a different winery now. So this is Hart Winery. This is a Pinot Gris. Pinot Gris. Nori's choking on something. Also, when we got the dogs out of the car, Nori had blood on her snout. We don't know where it's from. I've heard that happens with kids a lot. So we made it back home and uh, we got wood. I guess that is the final, like, that's the resolution of this video. We got wood, this is the piece we chose. Uh, this is walnut, I'm like 95% sure it is walnut. And it's, it's very hard and uh, you guys probably saw hopefully that it's got a really nice flare right there in the middle that hopefully will come out once it has been properly sanded and finished. Uh, we got the finishing stuff over there as well. This stuff is called Unearthed, and uh, it's supposed to be really nice. At least if, if Rob if Rob was telling the truth, which seemed like he was pretty pretty straightforward guy. I don't see why he would he would lead us astray there. So um, I can't exactly tell you guys how the next steps are going to be with this, but I'm going to sand it. We get a real nice finish on it. Try to bring out any of the natural beauty there in the wood itself, and then I'm going to mount a bunch of computer parts to it. Then I'm going to stick it on the wall. But I can't really do any of that stuff yet because, of course, I got Threadripper right here to continue work on, and that's a little bit more time sensitive. So uh, I'm going to continue working on that. But I hope you guys have enjoyed this sort of in between vlog of me taking care of a few things around the house, and of course, making a big next step with my HTPC build. And I, I, I'm not sure how that's going to go. I've had my fair share of second thoughts today as far as how that's actually going to 
work with it wall mounted and everything. So now that you guys have a slightly better idea of what I'm planning on doing with that, let me know what you uh, think about it down in the comment section. Of course, hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed the video. Uh, like always, subscribe if you want to see more tech videos coming very soon, especially this Threadripper stuff. Uh, it's looking pretty good so far. I can't really say anything beyond that. Anyway guys, thanks again for watching this video and we'll see you next time.